Part two in this Star Sports World Cup preview featuring Nick Goff is the group stages, Nick, and in particular the groups, to win the group, to qualify, not to qualify, etc. And look, there's a lot of markets here. There's eight groups. We've touched on Uruguay being one of the main selections to win the World Cup at 28 to 1. And we'll go straight into Group A. And I know that the four to five interests you, not just because you're interested in winning the World Cup, but it's a particularly weak group, isn't it? It is. Um, so I think the first team to mention have been sort of the, the talking horse a little bit in the run-up, all because of Mo Salah. I think Egypt are massively overrated and way too short. Yeah. Um, so they're six to one to win. I'm actually group. a bit gutted that he's picked up this injury because <laughs> I wanted to be able to pose them with him playing, which is now going to be a co- it's going to cost more to, to oppose them um, with the doubts around him. Um, Russia don't look like they're a particularly good side, albeit what's home advantage worth to them there? Quite a lot, and you do have to factor in the likelihood that some refs may be, <laughs> um, let's put this, um, sympathetic to Russia it in... I know um, we're big time, Nick, and you're even bigger, but I don't think Putin watches our videos, so if you do want to get stuck into Russia... Speak for yourself, mate. I've got my speed dial. <laughs> <I've got laughs> um, so Russia's home advantage is definitely worth a lot, and they will look better in this tournament than they've looked in any of the friendlies because um, we've seen it, we saw it with Korea and Japan, we see it at World Cup, we saw it with South Africa in their own country, a bad side. Yeah. Um, we will... People will be a little bit surprised when Russia come out and, and get a couple of results here and there with a, with a bad team. But they're not in Uruguay's league. Of course. Um, and I think a four to five to win the group. Um, I like Uruguay. And I, I, and I think Russia are probably the ones that will get through with them, albeit that will be as likely as far as they go. OK, so leg one of the Nick Goff group ACA is Uruguay to win group A. Now, I know we didn't have a lot to say on group B, which is Spain, Portugal. The S- Spain would be in that in that group multi if I was having one, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, now, Group C is a group that did really interest you. Now, France are strong, two to seven favourites to win the group. Denmark are nine to two. Peru, nine to one. Australia, 20 to one. I think the thing that you said was the disparity between these four teams isn't as big as the prices suggest. Is that I correct? would not bet the two to seven, the two to seven France with, with Ben's money here. You know, just absolutely no chance that two to seven represents value for me um, on France to win this group. I think all of the three other sides in this group are a bit of a danger. Uh, Denmark have that X factor of Christian Eriksen. They're a very solid unit. And when Eriksen's on his game, look what he did to Ireland in that qualification. Play. Absolutely blew them away. Um, they played a friendly in the week against Sweden, at the weekend, sorry, and were far the better side. Both teams went sort of pretty full strength, other than Eriksen. Eriksen didn't play. Drew nil nil, but Denmark were the better side away to Sweden. I think Denmark looked pretty solid. They don't tend to concede a lot either, do they? No, you know? From Peru, Peru got through that hard South American qualifying campaign, albeit they were awarded a win against Bolivia because Bolivia fielded an ineligible player. Without that, they wouldn't have got there. Um, but their best player, Herrero, who was done for drugs, drugs. He's, been allow- he's been allowed to play now, which mentality-wise for them is very you know, it's a massive lift. And the team that I think no one's talking about, right, understandably, Australia are a bit underrated. They beat Czech Republic 4-0 in a friendly the other night. They've got good players throughout this team, a lot of which playing in Europe. Tom Rogic playing for Celtic in the number 10 role, really good player. I think Australia could cause a shock at some stage during this tournament. And if it came in the first game against France... You'd be loving it. That'd be a good result for me, yeah. Yeah. So look, if I had to find one bet in there, would it be France not to qualify, Australia to qualify, think, Denmark to win I the group? Denmark or? to win the group at 9-2 to two is very fair. OK, leg, leg two, there's we've got Uruguay at 4-5, Denmark at 9-2, to two to win Group C. Group D, we said, was about right. Argentina, Croatia, Nigeria. Really we? trappy group. Argentina at four to seven, about right. Um, could, Croatia, obviously, a very solid side and one of the best midfields in the whole tournament. thought Nigeria looked OK against England. Yeah, I friendly, did well, yeah. other, other than their goalkeeper chucked one in. He's, he's one of the worst goalkeepers in the tournament. Nigeria just, just don't have a goalkeeper. No. Um, Iceland wouldn't be for me. I think what they produced in the Euros. They've had their day in the sun, basically. Um, yeah, they did very well to get through the qualifying group, albeit they won a group with other teams in crisis at the time. Right, Group E. This is an interesting group. Brazil 2-9 to nine to win the group. Then you've got Switzerland at 6, Serbia at 8, and Costa Rica at 16. Yeah, another group where I'm in no rush to back the favourite. 2-9 to nine Brazil, plenty short enough when you've got two really solid European sides in there. Switzerland never get the praise they deserve, but <laughs> can't, kind of because of the way they play. They don't have yeah. any star players. They're pragmatic, but they get the job done, they, don't they? They play for nil-nils, one-nils, um, but 
They drew a friendly, friendly 1-1 with Spain the other night. Uh, there's, and there's no weakness, really, in, this, in the Swiss side. There's decent Premier League-level talent throughout that Will side. Will they score the goals to get the job done? That's, that's the concern. Um, they're like, if they're going to get through, there's going to be nil-nil here, a 1-0 you know, win there. Um, but they do prove in these tournaments that they do. That yeah, they they're are a good ca- are tournament of doing that. side, aren't they? Um, and in the, I think it was the last 16 of the Euros two years ago, they got beat on penalties by Poland. And you know, whenever you get beat on penalties, there's that unfinished business of how far could you have gone. And the other team in this group, eight to one, are quite interesting. Serbia. Um, they're one of those unpredictable teams who, when they get on a roll, confidence gets up and they got some momentum. They can they can bully teams. But when things go wrong, they fall out, throw the toys out of the prams, and things end spectacularly, disastrously. So for them to get the first game against the weakest team, they play Costa Rica first. If they can go and win that game, remembering what Costa Rica did four years ago, that's probably not going to repeat itself, though. And they don't look as strong this time around. Um, If Serbia can get off on a roll and get that first win under their belt, if you win your first game in a tournament, you're a high chance of going through. You'll probably only need one more point to get through if, if, you get, if you get that first win. Well, what I'll say is that we've got Brazil at 2-9. to nine. We say that they're short, but they'll get through the group. So I'm going to press you. You've got even money Switzerland or 6-5 to five Serbia to qualify. Which is in the Nick Goff, Affa? 6-5 um, to five Serbia is slightly better for me. I've got, I've got the two about the same. And um, I'm just happy to be with Serbia in, um, in, in all markets in this tournament, actually. Right, OK. Group F, we'll fly through this. I, for some reason, next to Mexico, I've got even money to qualify with a circle and four stars written you around it. You little shrewdy. So, come on then. Um, Mexico, for me, look, they, they always come to this tournament. They're a hard team to assess, Mexico. A lot of their players play at home in a Mexican league, which is quite a hard league to assess in terms of strength of um, you know, how strong the league is. Um, but every single World Cup, they get out of the group, but they, but they, they never win. They have this talk in Mexico about the fifth game. They never get through the last 16. It's five successive World Cups they've got knocked out of the last 16. And it looks like it could happen again, but <laughs> I do believe they're a better side. Uh, South Korea are, are, are uh, sawn apart, aren't a good yeah. side at the moment. Um, Sweden wins latter, and they sort of folded a bit too, didn't they? Sweden, a really negative bunch. There'll, yeah. be, there'll be some low-scoring games there, I think. Um, Mexico, for me, are better than Sweden. Uh, I do fancy Mexico even to get out of their group. Right, quick one on England and Belgium. Four to five, five to four. Who yeah. do you take to win the group? I haven't got anything of interest to say there. I think that's right. Um, Belgium v England, I think Belgium have got to be slight fives. I've got the, the better Best side, players. albeit I, I, I don't rate Martinez. How can you? <laughs> um, and Tunisia and Panama look a long way behind. So I do think England and Belgium go through. I don't but the prices are right. I don't have a view on the order because I think four to five, five to four is fine. Right, Group H, Colombia five to four, Poland seven to four, Senegal nine to two, and Japan seven. I know you've got a strong view here. This is the most interesting group of the World Cup, and it's the one where I think there's a false favourite. I'm mad keen to be against Colombia in this group in, in as many markets as I can. Okay. Um, I think for um, what reason? Yeah, it's a good question. I just uh, it's more I'm big pro Poland and Senegal. Um, I think Poland that Poland remind me in some ways of, of Switzerland. There's 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 real strength in depth there. They're, for a mid tier European side, there's not much. Um, they're not lacking much in the starting eleven. They're, they're, they've got so solid Premier League quality players all over that side, and Lewandowski up front to score the goals. And if we're going to get a low scoring World Cup. To have a top-class striker like that who will finish chances when they're given to him might make the difference. And Senegal, I think, of the African sides, um, actually but I quite like a lot of the Af- I, I like um, Morocco as well in Group B, albeit they've been drawn with Spain and Portugal, which yeah. is a real hospital pass. But th- they look a decent side, Morocco. But Senegal managed to get themselves in a group where at 9-2, to two, I think... Nine to two to win the group and eleven to eight to qualify Senegal because I'd want to be against Japan. They're they're in crisis, Japan. Okay, so out of those eight prices in Group H to win the group to qualify, I need you to pick one for me for the last leg of the uh, eleven to eight Senegal to qualify. Right, so the Nick Goff Group Acker is Uruguay at four to five to win Group A, Denmark to win Group C at nine to two, Serbia to qualify from Group E at six to five, Mexico Nap to qualify from Group F even money and Senegal to qualify from group H11 8 there's a lucky 31 there you go job done job done I think so right. that's Nick Goff on the groups remember this Star Sports opening offer of that have 20 quid on any market and you'll get 250 quid if they win the World Cup Germany and 500 if they win on penalties but Nick look 
I wish you all the best of luck and I very much hope you're right with Mexico. Thanks mate, cheers.